does it affect, if at all, the investment thesis in software, particularly where it applies to security? Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I think this is going to prove to be actually a real demand event on a go-forward basis. Um, and you can think about it in, in, in a couple of ways. One, the demand on the security vendors themselves. I think what we'll find is, given the uh, exposed vulnerabilities that this shows, um, the fact that the bad guys could still get into even our most secure networks uh, in the government, even into uh, a security company like FireEye, uh, really shows that there's more work to be done on that security side of the equation. In the near term, what we're going to have to do is understand what those vulnerabilities are, and it looks like the supply chain in terms of bringing software into your environment is an exposed vulnerability. How do we address that, number one? Number two, how do we um, fix the problem, right? There's going to be a lot of time spent investigating where has this hack gone, what has been compromised, what's good and what's bad in your systems. And that's going to take a lot of human capital, a lot of people power to be put into the equation, and a lot of tools. Um, active threat hunting tools uh, going into, into the environment to find out where you've been breached, what's good and what's bad. And then how do we respond on a go-forward basis to make sure this doesn't happen again? Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that you're not going to be able to stop all the threats, but what you can do is more actively monitor what's going on in your environment to try to find this stuff faster. Right. What we're going to find right. is the most malicious part of it is it's been persistent in these uh, environments for up to nine months. Well, let, let's talk more about Microsoft itself. You note that it's been sort of stuck for most of the last half of the year, and I'm looking at its movement relative to Apple. What happened to, to Microsoft just from a trade uh, perspective in the back half of the year, and what do you think it'll take in 2021 to get in gear? Sure. So I think part of what happened with, uh, with Microsoft is that uh, you went from a period of really great results. Uh, Microsoft pretty much had two straight years of every key performance indicator was up and to the right, heading in the right direction. Revenues were accelerating, margins were heading up. And over the past two quarters, they've had to deal with one, COVID, and there was some real impacts on their business from COVID, and two, tougher compares. So it's not like the results have been poor. Um, your earnings estimates are still going up. Um, they're still doing well, but not as well as they had been doing in that prior period. So there's something of a, a downshifting in the overall multiple. People weren't willing to pay that peak multiple for results that were still good, but not those peak results. I think a lot of that has come to the, into the stock. The multiple has pulled back. It's trading at around 26 times on our calendar 22 numbers, which is a more reasonable level. So one, that's the good setup into 2021. What gets the stock working again, in my opinion, is seeing better results in Azure, that, that growth starting to stabilize. And what we see is one of the primary sort of increased spending activities going on in 2021, which is going to be public cloud computing. That's going to accrue a lot to Microsoft. That gets us fundamentally positive on them. And then two, just getting past these tough compares. You had a really big PC refresh cycle going on in 20, uh, 2019. That becomes a tougher compare. Um, once you get over that, the, the, you don't have as much of a headwind. You had some good um, uh, product cycles going on in server and tools. Once you get past that or the, 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 the uh, um, tough compares from that, there's just going to be a much clearer road ahead to hmm. the, the good parts of the equation showing through to Microsoft's bottom line. Right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.